نستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين احسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والجار ذي القربى والجار الجنب والصاحب بالجنب وابن السبيل وما ملكت ايمانكم ان الله لا يحب من كان مختالا فخورا الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس بالبخل ويكتمون ما آتاهم الله من فضله واعتدنا للكافرين عذابا مهينا والذين ينفقون اموالهم رئاء الناس ولا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الاخر ومن يكن الشيطان له قرينا فساء قرينا وماذا عليهم لو انفقوا مما رزقهم الله وكان الله بهم عليما وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما انت بنعمه ربك بمجنون وان لك لاجرا غير ممنون وانك لعلى خلق عظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اكمل المؤمنين ايمانا احسنهم خلقا وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اتق الله حيث ما كنت واتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اغزو غير قومك بحسن خلقك وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اثقل شيء يوضع في ميزان العبد يوم القيامة حسن الخلق وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أتدرون ما أكثر ما يدخل الناس الجنة تقوى الله وحسن الخلق أتدرون ما أكثر ما يدخل الناس النار الأجوفان الفم والفرج أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ما قال ربنا وخالقنا ورازقنا من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي نبي الرحمة كما تحب وترضى عدد ما تحب وترضى كلما ذكره الذاكرون وكلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون respected elders brothers friends ladies listening at home first of all we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq to perform salatul isha with jamaat may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to pray all five daily salah with jamaat may allah accept our humble ibadat and reward us in full and be pleased with us. Thereafter, I would like to thank Maulana Imran Sahib, Maulana Hazrat Maulana Adam Sahib for inviting me to this auspicious gathering, your spiritual retreat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and make this gathering beneficial for the whole of Leicester and for the whole of UK, wherever people are listening. Respected elders, brothers, friends, I was thinking about talking something down the line of tasawwuf. Then I thought, Hazrat Maulana Adam Sahib's speeches are enough for you. About zikr, fikr, taqwa, taharat, ikhlas, ibadat, worship, whatever. Line of tasawwuf. Allah, love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Denouncing the luxuries of the world. Asceticism, zuhud. All this, Hazrat Maulana Sahib is enough for you. 
I would like to point out one important aspect of our deen which is also tasawwuf. And that is that tasawwuf is not just of zikr, fikr and ibadat and having the tasbih in your hand and busying yourself in zikrullah. Of course, this is important, this is necessary for our close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to attach our heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gain that nisbat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as frequently as possible. We have heard the ahadith emphasizing the importance of zikrullah, that busy yourself in zikrullah all the time. The best of amal is أن تفارق الدنيا ولسانك رطب من ذكر الله لا يزال لسانك رطب من ذكر الله Always busy yourself. Your tongue should, should be moist in zikrullah. Four, four qualities whosoever is blessed with them has achieved the goodness of this world and of the hereafter. لسان ذاكر قلب شاكر بدن على البلاء الصابر وزوجة لا تبغيه خون في نفسها ولا ماله a tongue moist in the remembrance of Allah, a heart which is grateful to the bounties of Allah, and a body which is patient upon any sickness, bimari, illness that comes upon it, and a wife who is dutiful and who, does, who is not treacherous with regards to a person's wealth, nor to her own life. If you get these four things, you have achieved and gained the goodness of this world and of the hereafter. So zikrullah is of utmost important, no doubt about that. Ibadat. But Deen Islam does not just consist of Ibadat and worshipping. Of course, worshipping is important. Along with worship and Ibadat, there is the Mu'amalat. Dealings. Bayaw shira, kharido farooq. Buying, selling, transactions, renting, giving out, and being honest in your dealings. Islam puts great importance on that. Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, conducts chapters in Sahih al-Bukhari with the name of Kitab al to show that bay'a shira and transactions should be clean. There should be no tre treachery in there, no dishonesty in there. This is also taqwa. This, is also, this also brings a person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you should be extremely careful in your dealings. And uh, uh, shubuhat, if there is any shuba and doubt in the dealing, then don't do that dealing. Let go of it. If there is any shuba from your side, then let go of it. Forget it. Don't, don't get, indulge yourself in there. And then he brings the hadith in there. Al-halal ubayyin wal haram ubayyin. Wa baynahuma umurun mushtabihat. La ya'lamuhunna kathirun minan nas. This is in Kitab al -Buyuh. That halal bear is clear, haram bear is clear. In between there are some doubtful things. So if you make a habit, to forego and abandon and leave the doubtful dealings and only stick to halal dealings, then your deen will be pure and clean and you will be a pious person. And if you fall for the shubuhat and doubtful things, everything, whether eating, drinking, sleeping, and also over here as well in with regards to your transactions, if you fall for the shubuhat, you will fall for the haram as well. So make your mentality clear. I only want to do whatever is halal, anything doubtful, avoid it. Imam Bukhari explains that in these abwar. Imam Bukhari himself is a very honest businessman. He used to do business. He used to import goods and sell. And people come and uh, he would deal in a very honest manner. We heard the story somewhere. You must have heard it. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi imports some goods. And when some businessmen hear that he has brought in so much real nice stuff, they come and they say, please sell us that stuff for 5,000. Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah says, I'll think about it. Tomorrow we'll see. They go. Another group come and they say, we will buy that same stuff for 10,000. Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah says, um, no, when the first group came, I didn't promise them anything. I didn't sign or write anything. I didn't give my word or anything. But in my heart, I made an intention that I will give it to them. And I don't want to break my intention. So go. Next day, he calls that group and gives them the, for the 5,000. This little bit of profit is enough for me. I don't want to break my knee at my intention. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi. He, also, he was also a businessman. He was a merchant. He used to trade beautiful silk. And he would never buy and sell by himself. He would have some agents who would do the work and they would share the profit. So Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, imports some real nice silk. 
And one agent comes, he says, I will go and sell this. Imam Sahib says, okay. Imam Sahib instructs him that, look, this piece of cloth and this is a bit faulty and it has some defect in there. Whenever, whoever you sell it to, inform him of that defect. He said, okay, no problem. So he goes around and he sells, 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 sells. After a few days when everything is sold, he comes back and he brings all the money. And they, you know, they are about to share out the profit. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi asked the question. Did you inform that person to whom you sold that uh, cloth with the defect? And he said, oh, 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 sorry, I forgot. And I don't, do you know who that person is? No, I don't know who I sold it to. Imam said, oh, oh, you sold something with defect without telling that person and taking full price for it. How did you do that? This money is not halal for me. And he said, you take your share and the rest of the money, including his profit and whatever he had paid for that, he gave all that in sadaqah. To the poor, that gave it distributed among the poor people. I don't own this money. This is for money taqa shubuhat, staying away from shubuhat. Anything that is doubtful, stay away from it. So, mu'amalat, be very clear cut in your dealings. Imam Bukhari Ramatullah teaches us in there. And then, after ibadat and mu'amalat, we have the mu'asharat, social life, family life. Social life, how to deal with your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, your aunties, your nephews, your nieces, and your relatives, your own family, your wife, your children, how to deal with them, how to treat them. Islam instructs you down that line, follow that line, follow the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we have that line of mu'asharat, adabul mu'asharat, read Hazrat Mawlana Sharaf Ali Thanvi's book, adabul mu'asharat, how you should deal with them. So this is one, another aspect of our deen, which our deen instructs and teaches us. Today is Christmas day, and our respected queen has been focusing on this subject of family life. Where there's two important things on the news, main headlines. One is the queen's speech focusing totally on family life. She is saying that family life has broken down. We need to get together and get our families together. People don't care about their grandparents, about their relatives, send them to homes. There is a whole lot of strain on the social services. Not enough facilities for the children uh, who go into care, for the elderly. And she does not directly indicate, but she pays importance on family life. And the greatest threat to our country is from the breaking of family life. And how did the riots happen? This is the second point, which the Archbishop of Canterbury was talking about. That during the past year, the events of the riots in August and the greed of the bankers overshadowed all the other events. So two points over here, the riots. Why did the riots happen? Also over here included is the breaking of the family life. Those youngsters who went on rampage, they, they were, they were in, in, in such a, a terrible state. I'm not offering any excuse for them. What we're trying to say is they haven't had the proper upbringing. There is no one to look after them, no father to reprimand them, no one to shout at them that this is wrong, you shouldn't be doing this. No one to take care of them. And this is what makes their nature that type. And then they go out and do whatever they do. So if there was that family life, that bond, that, 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 that connection with the families, sitting down, eating together, and you know, even us, our homes are, are, are become like, have become like hotels, not homes. Everybody comes into their bedroom, into their computer, on their own work. Who, one doesn't know what the other person is doing in his bedroom, in her bedroom. The parents in theirs, the child in theirs, the daughter in theirs, the son in theirs. And when it's time for eating, he comes from the college, takes from the uh, uh, food table, eats and goes back to, into a room. Nobody sitting down to eat. It's like a hotel, not home. Home is where you find the peace. You sit down together. You share your concerns with one another. You talk with one another. And you have that love and bond and connection with one another. You know what's going on in your home, what your children are doing. This, this, this home and family life has broken down. So Islam teaches us and guides us along this line as well. You have to have your social life properly in the right manner. How to deal with your parents. The ayat which I recited to you is with regards to our social life. I wish someone could 
sent a translation of these three ayat which I recited to the respected queen. That of course you said this, your speech was really nice. We liked it. However, there is something more to that. Islam doesn't just talk about family life, but more than that, about the rights of others as well. And these ayat include the answer to the Archbishop of Canterbury as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and associate none with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. Associate nothing. No human being, no sun, no moon, no idol, no statue, no tree, no animal. Associate nothing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Allah. He is the only one. He is the one who created the whole universe. He is Rabbul Alameen. He is Ahkamul Hakimeen. He is Malikul Mulk. He is Shahinshah Mutlaq. He has the kingdom and domin dominion over the whole world. So Allah is Allah. Allah is Rabbul Alameen. Wala tushiriku bihi shay'a. Do not associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Be extremely kind to your parents. Show them kindness, gentleness. Be kind with them. Deal with them in a gentle manner. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا If they reach the old age wherein a person becomes chirchir and is always agitated and angry and shouting and screaming, they reach that old age and you can't take them anymore, then control yourself. You are young, you can control yourself. They are old. They can't control their nerves. They get agitated very quickly. So in that state, if they say something to you, don't shout at them, don't swear at them, don't abuse them, don't smack them, don't hit them. Allah said, never mind abusing and insulting them. Allah said, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Don't even say uff to them. Uff is the lightest word a person can say to someone. When someone hurts you, you are hurt, and then the lightest word you can say, uff, what did you do? And then other things come after that, swearing and abusing. So Allah said the lightest word, uffin, don't even say that word. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا And do not scold them. دَعَتْنَا مَتْ اُنْكُ جِرَكْنَا نَيْ غُصَّ مَتْ كَرْنَا اُنْكَ اُوبَرْ Control karna apne aapko. Wala tanharuhuma. Wa kul lahuma qawlan kareema. Speak to them, talk to them with words which are gentle, nice, kind, soft, full of karam and sharafat and buzrugi. Wa kul lahuma qawlan kareema. Not only that. Wa khfid lahuma janaha dhulli minar rahmati. And lower your wings of humility before them. Humble yourself before them. وَخْفِذْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Out of mercy and gentleness and kindness. وَقُلْ وَقُلْ وَخْفِذْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ آگے کیا ہے؟ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And say, Oh my Lord, show mercy to them just as they brought me up when I was a child, when I was little, when I was small, when I was unable to walk and talk, when I was unable to uh, uh, send, uh, send, uh, tell them, express my feelings, to ask for food, to go out and earn anything, they took good care of me when I was that small baby and child. So in their old age, now I have become 40, 45, they are 60, 70, they need my care, I'm trying my best, oh Allah, but have mercy on them, have mercy on them. Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbayani sahih. Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullah says, you shouldn't say this dua just once in a while. Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullah says, if a person prays five times a day, and after every namaz five times a day, he reads this dua, Rabbi Rahmuhuma Kama Rabbayani Sagheera, then he has fulfilled the right of his Lord Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, and he has fulfilled the right of his parents due to whom he came in this dunya. So your right will only be fulfilled to your parents when you fulfill both, both hukuk of Allah and hukuk of your parents. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رْحَمُهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا So Allah said, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Be very kind and gentle and nice to your parents. In fact, in one hadith, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم نَيْتُ حَدْ كَرْدِي Someone asked, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا حَقُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ عَلَى وَلَدِهِمَا 
What is the right of parents on their child? What is the right of parents on their child? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Huma jannatuka wa naruka. Your parents are either your jannat or your jahannam. The choice is yours. You treat them nicely. You press their feet. Al jannatu tahta aqdam al ummahat. You take care of your mother and your father. Al walidu awsatu abwaab al jannah. Fa in shi'ta fadi' dhalik al baba aw yhfazhu. And your jannat is ready for you. You abuse them, insult them, and your jahannam is being prepared for you. The choice is yours. So, first Allah said, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانًا And in walidain, grandparents are also included. Because grandparents need our attention more than our parents. They are older than our parents. So we should do their khidmat as much as we can too. Never be, uh, you know, ill-mannered to your, uh, to your grandparents as well. Then Allah said, وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى Be extremely kind to your family. Your relations, those who are close to you. Zil Qurba includes all those who are Qareeb and near you. They will include your relatives and they will include your wife and your children as well. Because they are Qareeb, they are close to you. Your wife deserves your good treatment. Be kind to her, be nice to her. Why treat her, you know, like a piece of dirt, like some people do? This Ramadan, last Ramadan, I was in London and there was bayan in ladies and then some letters came, some questions and among them there was this letter of a young newly married girl and she said that, you know, my husband does not fulfill my rights. He goes to work every day, in the evening he comes and then he's going out with his friends and then on Fridays he goes for football, when he comes back he's smelling sweaty and then he jumps on me, he forces me to sleep with him, even though I don't like it, but he forces me. You know, I, well, I have some rights on him as well. If he wants me to look good and smell good, then he should also look good and smell good as well. So I read out that letter in front of the congregation, that this is what's happening in your homes. The elders, they should try and rectify the condition of the son. That, oh son, you should not be treating your wife in this manner, go, sit down with her, talk to her, dress nicely for her. Imam Muhammad ibn al-Hassan al-Shaybani rahmatullahi alayhi used to say, used to wear real nice beautiful clothes, tip top, what cut, khushbu, khushbu, barabar. And he would say, inna li nisa'an wa jawari, fawuhibbu an atazayyana lahunna kayla yanzurna ila ghayri. I have many wives and many maids, slave girls. So I want to look beautiful for them so that they don't look at anyone besides me. Their attention is always on me. They don't think about anyone besides me. Allah, this is what's happening today. We stay scruffy. Then the ladies look at dramas and movies and Indian star and this star and that star. La tawba astaghfirullah. So your rights upon one another. Allah is saying, we only want our rights. We don't want to fulfill our responsibilities. That's where the problem comes. Don't always ask for your rights. Think of your responsibility. If the husband thinks of his responsibility and the wife thinks of her responsibilities and both fulfill their responsibilities, then all the rights have been fulfilled. So don't demand your rights. Think, what will my wife want from me? What is, would be she be thinking about me? How should I treat her? What is the best way I can deal with this situation? And in any situation, you, if you think that line, in, down that line, inshallah, all problems will be resolved. So, وَبِذِلْ qurba With your wife, with your children, take care of your children, nurture them properly. Just like a gardener looks after his garden and his trees and takes real good care of the garden, then the tree will bear fruit as well. The flowers will look really nice. Otherwise, it will become like a jungle. So similarly, our children, we should nurture them, take care of them, look after them, sit down with them, pay special attention to them. Our family should be of most importance to us. We should love our family dearly. We should love all our children. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us a beautiful dua in the Quran. Wherein Allah says, 
حتى إذا بلغ شده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال ربي أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين لا منشنز the rights of parents وبصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا and then Allah mentions that uh, when children grow up they fall into one of two categories one is of that category who is pious who is gentle who is kind who is dutiful to his parents to such an extent that he grows up and he has grown up to the age of 40 وبلغ 40 سنة that is the age of maturity when the aql and understanding and wisdom is complete. So you have reached that age. That is why prophets were blessed with prophethood normally at the age of 40. So you are 40 years old now. On one side you have your children who are young, who need your attention. On the other side you have your parents. And you are looking after both of them, your parents and your children. And after namaz you are making dua. رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ O oh Allah, give me the tawfiq and ability to thank you for the ni'mats and bounties and blessings you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. And وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ Give me the ability to do righteous and good deeds by which you could be pleased. And وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي And the third thing is Make my progeny and my children Nake and salih muttaqiyan for his God for me إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I repent to you, I turn towards you And I am from those who submit to you So he's praying for his children and for his parents For his parents and for his children Allah says this is the complete person. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ نَتَقَبَّلُ عَنْهُمْ أَحْسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا وَنَتَجَاوَزُ عَنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ فِي أَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ وَعْدَ الصِّدْقِ الَّذِي كَانُوا يُعَدُونَ They will be going into Jannah. And وَالَّذِي قَالَ لِوَالِدَيْهِ أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا And the one who says to his parents, Uf tuf to you. أَتَعِدَانِنِي أَنْ أُخْرَجَ Are you telling me that I'm going to come out of my grave one day? I don't believe in life after death. وَقَدْ خَلَتِ الْقُرُونُ مِن قَبْلِي Many generations have come before me. وَهُمَا يَسْتَغِيثَانِ اللَّهِ وَإِلَكَ آمِنْ And they are asking Allah's help that, Oh Allah, take uh, what's, what's happening with my son? And they are saying to him, وَإِلَكَ وَوَ unto you, آمِنْ Believe, believe in Allah, believe in life after death. إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌ Allah's promise is true. فَيَقُولُ مَا هَذَا إِلَّا سَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ And he says, Oh, these are only tales of the previous nations. I don't know, nobody from the previous nations has come back from their grave. I'm not going to come back. إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سَاطِرُ الْأَوَلِينَ Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَوْلِ فِي أُمَمٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا خَاسِدِينَ They are the ones upon whom the word of Allah has been established. مُهَرْ لَقْ جَئِي ہے Sealed, خَدَمْ, finished. حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَوْلِ فِي أُمَمٍ They will be included in such nations. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ who have passed before them من الجن والإنس from جن and إنس إنهم كانوا خاسدين ولكل درجات مما عملوا وليوفيهم أعمالهم وهم لا يظلمون So we have to take care of our children. They will fall into either one of two categories. Take care of them, nurture them, sit down with them, advise them, counsel them and give them the best of educations. Best of ta'aleem, best ilm, best uh, you know, education. Make sure who they befriend, who their friends are, who their company is, who they socialize with. If they are with, in good company, say Alhamdulillah. Bad company, tell them to sit down. Where is all this money coming from? 150 pound shoes, 200 pound jacket, 400 pound shirt and this three piece suit. Where are you getting all this money from? You haven't got any jobs. That means there's some garbar. Where is that garbar coming from? Check that out. Tell him, get rid of this. I don't want this in my house. If you want to bring this, get out. I don't want you here. So take care. Be strict with them. Be firm where you have to be firm. This is uh, included in here. You have to be, you have to take care of them. And with the other relatives. A person is only responsible for the food and taking care of his wife and his children. With regards to other relatives, his brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, niece, Nephews, he's not responsible. Their parents are responsible for them. However, if he is wealthy, 
he has enough money, he can show kindness to them, he should be kind to them, spend on them, along with his family. My Hazrat Mulana Yusuf Mutala Sahib Damat Barakatuhum once said, when a person is blessed with money by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should, he should, he should categorize the spending. First, he should spend on himself, wear good clothes, eat good food, and if he's sick, have medicine, take care of yourself, look after your health properly. If you need car, have a good car, take care of yourself. And along with himself, his family, his wife, she deserves his attention, spend on her. Whatever you spend on her, you will get thawab of sadaqah. If you give her some money, 100 pound, 500 pound, it's as though you are giving thawab, uh, you are giving sadaqah and charity to a poor person. She needs your attention, your help, you give her, Allah will give you sadaqah. The Prophet ﷺ said, even the morsel you put in her mouth will be classed as a sadaqah. So spend on your wife and on your children. They need your money. Take care of them. Make sure they don't go around begging someone else's, someone else. If the ice cream man comes and your child wants ice cream, and you see that other children are eating and you don't buy for him, how is he going to feel? No, go, spend some money. Give him some ice cream and lolly as well. He feels good as well. He doesn't feel left out. Spend on your children, you will get sawab of sadaqah. And then, when you have gone over this, then second stage is, you spend on your other relatives. Those around you. Look, if your brother is in need, if your sister is in need, if she has some bills and she can't pay them, or if she has some problem, some, her house has been burgled, and she needs some help, your father, your mother, they are living separately, they have their own uh, house and own income, but they are now in need of help, help them. Your uncle, your auntie, in this country, or over somewhere else, then you should help them, you spend on them. So the second darja and stage is upon your relatives. And then comes the third darja and third degree of others. If, if you have surplus wealth, then you spend on others. And then comes the stage of charities. And among the charities, masajid, madaris, your local community comes first. You have to spend on your own masjid. And after that, if there is left, then you have to spend somewhere else and give other places. Your local madaris come first because you have to support your local madaris in the country, nationally. The Darul Looms, wherever they are, support them. And then outside the country. So you categorize your spending and spend in this manner and your reward will be increased. Allah is saying, وَبِذِلْ qurba." And then yatama. Be kind to the orphans. Yatim, his rank and darja is great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was raised as a yatim. Many of our great elders, mashayikh, ulama were raised as yatim. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi was an orphan. He was a yatim. Many others, mashayikh, you go into a great list. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to take the work of deen from them. He made them strong from the, their childhood. And uh, then Allah took the work of deen from them. So, a yatim deserves our attention. Someone complained to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about his heart being so hard. He wants to cry but he can't cry. He's not soft. He can't get that gentleness, that softness by which he can bring tears to his eyes. There is qasawat. The heart has become so hard like a rock. He can't weep. He can't have any gentleness, any kindness and softness. So th this is happening to me. How can I cure myself? This is how Sahaba used to ask the Prophet ﷺ for cure. This is another aspect of tasawwuf. That you are connected to your shaykh. And if you feel any sickness, illness within you, you take the remedy from him and the medicine and you cure yourself. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, my heart has become really hard. Give me some anecdote, some zikr, fikr, some, something to do by which I can soften my heart. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned many things. Like in one place he said, إِنَّ الْقُلُوبَ تَصْلَعُ كَمَا يَصْلَعُ الْحَدِيدِ إِذَا أَصَابَهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ جِلَاءَهَا كَثْرَةُ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ وَتِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ that their hearts get rusted just as metal gets rusted when water continuously falls upon it. The old cars, they used to get rusted very quickly. Metal fire escape gets rusted very quickly. So the, when water keeps falling upon it, the metal gets rusted. So the sins keep falling upon our hearts. One guna, another guna, and guna, and sin, and sin. That's disobedience rusts our heart. And to polish it, to clean it, to get rid of that rust. 
There are two things Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said, kathratu dhikril maut, remember your death frequently. Remember one day you're going to die. Sit down, do muraqabah of maut. Before going to sleep at night, close your eyes and think muraqabah of maut for five minutes, for ten minutes. Malakul maut is here. He's extracting my soul from my feet. He's brought it up to my knees and to my hip and he's brought it to my chest. Now it's going out of my mouth and my nose and it's being taken out. And then my soul is gone. My body has fallen like a piece of wood. And the people are taking my body for ghusl, give their shrouding kafan. They're going janazah, praying janazah now. Imam Sahib is leading salah. And now they're taking me to the qabr. Now I'm being lowered inside the qabr. The mitti is being thrown. The soil is being thrown upon me. And then dua is done. People are going. And munkar nakira here. Man, fa- man, man rabbuk, ma deenuk, man nabiyuk. Oh Allah, how can I reply to them? What can I say to them? So you bring, visualize that. Your death, this is called muraqaba, contemplating. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, number one, he said, kasratu dhikril maud. And number two, tilawatul Qur'an. To polish your hearts. The other anecdote and remedy is tilawatul Qur'an. Read Qur'an as much as possible. Ibrahim al-Khawas rahmatullahi alayhi says that for everything that is remedy and dawa and ilaj and the dawa of qulub are five things. Among those he mentions tilawatul Qur'an, tahajjud, qiyamul layl, and mujalasatu salihin, sitting in the company of the pious people. So these are the things by which a person can cure his heart. So he has mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu has mentioned other things. Over here when this sahabi asked for some anecdote, he said, imsah ra'sal yateem. Wipe your hand over the, over the head of a yateem. You know, stroke it over his head. Have to show him some mercy. Oh, oh, this is a yateem boy. This is an orphan boy. And he said, visit the sick. And he said, follow the janaza. Go to the graveyard. This will soften your heart. After a few days, he comes and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I did that. And Alhamdulillah, my heart has become soft now. I can feel that my heart is now like a sponge which can absorb the water. So similarly, my heart has become soft and it's absorbing all the nasihat and advice that you give me and I feel really good now. So, uh, yateem has a very high rank in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can take care of a yateem, an orphan, then do so. If you see, know of some boy who is a yateem, now yateem is only up till bulugh, up till puberty. When a child reaches puberty, he becomes baligh, then he is a man, he's grown up, he stands on his own feet, he doesn't stay a yateem. Yateem is only when he's a child and before bulugh. So if you know of such children, take care of them, you know, help them. If they need any fees for their schools or any money, give them. If their mother is a widow, help her and you know, spend on her. If it is within your family, you, you have to support her. So this is with yatim, wal yatama. Spend on the yatim, show kindness to the yatama. And wal yatama, wal masakim, and the poor. The poor among our society. We should go out and look for the poor people. This is what our slav used to do. This is what our slav used to do. To the extent, of men of high caliber, like Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He used to go out in search of someone whose khidmat he can do. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu says, there was this old lady in Medina Munawwara. And uh, I knew that she is struggling, she is not well. So one day I thought, let me go and help her. So I went to her house and I asked, Amma ji, is there anything I can do for you? Any khidmat? You need to, some water, I can bring you some water from the well, some clothes to wash, I can wash them for you, some medicine, I can get it for you. Or any khidmat, any food, cooking, anything, I can do that for you. And she replies, Beta, mera sab kaam kisi ne kar diya hai. Someone has come and done all my, this work of mine. So Umar thought, who could it be? He, he never, it never crossed his mind that it would be Abu Bakr Siddiq, who was the Khalifa at that time. Who was the Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. He never thought that it would be him. So next day, he thought that I'll go a bit early. He goes really early in the morning. And still she says that someone has come and done all my work for me. And the next day he goes really early. And then he sees that that person who comes to do her khidmat and who's been doing it for the past many days is the Khalifa himself, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So be kind to the poor around the community, society. Whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. 
If your neighbor is non-Muslim but he is poor, he is in needy, and due to the climate we are living in, the recession, many businesses have fallen and many peop- many uh, wealthy people have you know fallen in need of help. So if you know someone who needs help, go out there and help him, whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Many people have been evacuated from their homes. Their homes have been repossessed. They have nothing left. They are living in a council house after their whole huge mansion which they owned. No business left, nothing. They are on the dole. If you see someone who is like that, help him. Is there, is the society we live in, is there festival time? If you can help someone, you know, buy him some present. And don't say to you, shirk and this and that. No, by helping someone, helping needy and poor, whether Muslim, non-Muslim is allowed. You should not differentiate between them. Help them. Masakin. Allah didn't say here, miskin, who is a Muslim. Here the word is general, masakin. Any miskin, help them. You know someone is poor old lady, help her. Take care of her. And then Allah said, wal masakin, wal jaridil qurba. And your neighbor, who is your relative. And wal jaridil junub. And your neighbor who is distant. A neighbor will be either related to you or non-related to you. Allah said, be kind to both of them. Your relation, because in the, in the other, in the previous communities, the neighborhood would consist of the family. Like one whole kabila and tribe would live in one area. This is the kabila of Banu Abdul Ashhal. This is the place of Banu Sa'ida, Banu Najjar, and Banu Funa, Banu Funa. And that's how the areas and neighborhoods were known. So all, they would all be related among themselves. Like in our countries, we go, this is Patel for you, this is Limbada for you, and this is that for you. So in that for you and in that area, all related to one another, somewhere, somewhere is connected. So Allah said, Wal jaridil qurba, if your neighbor is related to you, then you should show him kindness. And wal jaril junub, a neighbor who is not related to you, who is distant, show him kindness as well. And was sahib bil jambi, and show kindness to the person who sits next to you. Whether in your class, in the school, college, university, or whether on the train, on the bus, on the plane, someone who is sitting next to you. In the old books of Tafasir, they write that if you eat pan, then don't spit at him. <laughs> Today, if you smoke, then don't send your smoke to him. Because people smoke. In, in other countries, like on the trains, where the windows are open. So don't send your smoke to him. Don't abuse him. Don't sit in such a way that he gets disturbed. Think of him. How are you? Okay, fine. What can I do for you? If you need something, can I, I'll get it for you. No problem. Be kind to them. Show some good manners, some akhlaq. So, wasahibi bil jambi. The person who is sitting next to you, even for a moment, for a while as well. Today, you know, our akhlaq have become really bad. Never mind outside. In the house of Allah, if you are standing in the saf and someone comes, we <clears throat> stretch out our muscles, flex our muscles, hey, don't you sit here, go stand somewhere else. But this is the house of Allah, you are standing before Allah, why do you have to be so stubborn and tight? You know, humble yourself, okay, by coming, no problem, we'll space, inshallah, we'll both stand over here. But this is how we have become today. Allah is telling us over here, be extremely kind to the person who is next to you as well. Wabni Sabil and the traveler and wayfarer. A, a person who is on a journey and who has come to your town and you know that this person is a Musafir. Someone has come from India for a few weeks, two, three weeks, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh. You know that he is someone's relative, but he is a Musafir. So, chalo bhai, aapki dawat hai, kal humari yaan khaa leno. You know, feed him. This feeding the food is another aspect. Afsu salam wa at'imu ta'am. وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ النِّيَامِ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَمْ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ And Musafir, if you know some Walana who has come for chanda or for whatever reason, then you know, ask him, that Mawlana sahab, khana wana khali ya kain, chalo humar saad khana khala. Take him home, feed him. Do you want to go somewhere? I will give you a lift. I will take you there. This is khidmat and showing kindness to the Musafirin, those on a journey who are traveling. And wama malakat aymanukum. Those under your authority. The literal translation is those whom your right hands possess. And the meaning is who are your subordinates, who are under your command. But you are a boss of a business and they are working for you. You are a manager and they are under you. So be kind to them. They need your kindness. They need you to be gentle with them. 
if you are gentle, soft with them, you don't have to shout all the time, you don't have to scream your head off all the time. You have to, you can be firm, but at the same time you can do everything, in a, keep everything in order and in a proper manner, but do it in a nice way, do it in a gentle way. So this is what Allah Pak is teaching us. Do you get the whole list which Allah has mentioned over here? And these are not my words, they are the words of Allah, Rabbul Alameen. Allah is speaking to me and to you. Allah is telling us this is what you should be doing. To me, to you, and to the whole world. Not just the Muslims, the non-Muslims. Allah is telling everybody. Because Allah said, وَعْبُدُ wa la tushriku bihi shaya. We will go over the translation again. Worship Allah and associate no partners unto Allah. Nothing with Allah. And show extreme kindness to your parents and to your relations and to the orphans and to the needy and the poor and to your neighbor who is related to you and to the neighbor who is not related to you and to the person who sits next to you and to the travelers and musafireen and wayfarers. Then Allah, and to those who are under your command and your authority. Then Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah does not like such a person who is proudy, haughty, and always boasting about his qualities. Who has pride in himself, arrogance, haughtiness, fakhr, takabbur, and always showing his pride. And Fakhur always boasting about his qualities. I am such, I am such, I am this, I am that. Allah does not like such people. Man kana mukhtal and Fakhur. Allah wants us to be humble. To humble ourselves before Allah and before the creation of Allah. Allah likes humility. Allah likes humbleness. This is good manners. This is good akhlaq. Which is our next subject. Allah said, Inna Allah la yuhibbu man kana mukhtal and Fakhur. And who are the mukhtal and Fakhur? Allah defines them. الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ وَيَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبُخْلِ Those who are stingy. And command others to be stingy as well. وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And who conceal and hide the grace of Allah which Allah has bestowed upon them. They don't want to show people how Allah has bestowed upon them. Today we have money but we want to hide it all the time under the carpet. Nobody should know. We will stay scruffy, use old cars. This person died somewhere in, I don't know where, wherever. And you know, he had a very old house, an old city, which was torn from here and there. No good carpet, nothing. And when he used to come to masjid, people would think, oh, this person is very, very poor. And you know, he is in need. However, when he died, they found that under, in his house, under the floorboards, 45,000 pounds were stored. And what happened to that amount? His young son of 20 maybe, he has flashy cars and this and that. Within a few days, the whole money is gone. This is what happens. If you leave behind and be stingy in this manner, that's what's going to happen to you. Don't conceal the ble- favor and grace which Allah has bestowed upon you. Spend it in the path of Allah. Don't hide it. Don't conceal it. Allah said they are stingy. They command others to be stingy. And they hide and conceal that grace which Allah has bestowed upon them. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So a person who had, who was in tattered t- state, who, whose hair were disheveled, and he asked him, do you have any wealth? And he said, yes, Allah has given me lots of wealth. I have camels, I have goats, I have good house, I, I have this, that, I have so much money, dirham, dinar. And the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ نِعْمَةً فَلْيُرَى أَثَرُ نِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ When Allah bestows some blessing upon you, then people should see that blessing upon you. That Alhamdulillah, I'm in a good state. That is why our mashayikh, even if there was faqa in their house, they had nothing to eat on that day, on the day before, and for three days they have been going through faqa and poverty and nothing to eat. But still when they would come out to the masjid, or they would come out to teach their students, they would wear good clothes and stay in nice uh, you know, manner. They would comb their hair, look good. They would never show that hunger on their face. They would show that Alhamdulillah, we are in a good state. Hazrat Pirani Pir Mujadid al Fisani Rahmatullahi Ali, Sheikh Ahmad Sadhindi Rahmatullahi Ali, sitting in his house, there was a faqa, and he and his children, his wife were also crying. But he liked that state of faqa, because when a person is in a state of faqa, Allah's Rahman mercy is attracted towards him. 
When we are fasting, we are staying hungry and thirsty for the sake of Allah. Allah's rahmah is directed towards us. So he was in that fat and he was making dua. And he was instructing and you know giving advice to the children and the wife as well. That would Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also went through faqa. He liked it. He liked that type of life. He didn't want to lead a flashy life. He wanted this. This is his by choice. He had the whole world at his feet. Allah offered him that to turn the mountains of Makkah into gold. He said, no, I don't want the mountains of Makkah to be turned into gold. I want to eat one day and be grateful to you. And the other day I want to be hungry so that I can remember those who are poor throughout the world. And I can, I can thank you. So, uh, Hazrat is sitting there and one of the maids and attendants informed someone and someone sent some food. So, Hazrat thanked. But then he said, how did they come to find out that today we have faqa in our house? And it was revealed that someone from the household informed them. And Hazrat called her and he said to her that, okay, you have been doing our khidmat, but you have told others about our internal affair so i am sorry we cannot keep you for khidmat anymore you are relieved of your duties so you know the mashayikh they wouldn't show their faqa and they would their hunger they would stay in a good condition good state allah Pak is saying if you have blessings then show that blessing to people alhamdulillah alhamdulillah has blessed me i don't want to stay in a bad state وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا And the ayat go on. Allah is teaching us good manners and good akhlaq in this, ayat, in this ayat. So the fourth thing of our deen is akhlaq. Ibadat, muamalat, muasharat and akhlaq. Our akhlaq characteristics should be good. We should be generous. We should be hospitable. We should be cheerful. And we should be humble. We should not have any pride, haughtiness, jealousy, anger, malice, hatred. All these are bad qualities. We should get rid of them. This is the sawwuf. Bas, my duty puri ho gayi hai. Kitna minute hai mere pas? Five minutes hai. Bas, to pura ho gaya yaar. Five minutes mein kya hai yaar? Maaf kijiye, bahut time le liya. Pata nahi hum bhi kahan se kahan chale gaye. बात यह हुई आज कि भाई दीन जो है सिर्फ इबादत का नाम नहीं इबादत भी मामलात भी और मुआशरत भी और अखलाक भी सही होने चाहिए अल्लाह हमें चारों एस्पेक्ट्स पर पूरा पूरा अमल करने की तौफीक नसीब फरमाए अल्लाह करे हमारी नमाजें भी सही हो जाएं हमारे मामलात और डीलिंग्स भी सही हों और हमारा मुआशरा और हमारी सोशल लाइफ भी दुरुस्त हो जाए और नंबर 4 हमारी अखलाक भी सही हो अखलाक सबसे अच्छे अखलाक किसके हैं حضرت سرکار دو عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے کتنے اچھے اخلاق ہیں سرکار دو عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اتنے اچھے اخلاق اتنے اچھے اخلاق اتنے اچھے اخلاق کہ ان کے اچھے اخلاق کی اللہ قرآن میں قسم کھاتے ہیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما انت بنعمه ربك بمجنون وان لك لاجرا غير ممنون وانك لعلى خلق عظيم and you know when this surah is revealed is the second surah to be revealed the first surah is iqra bism rabbik alladhi khalaq and the second surah is nun walqalam wa ma yasturun in the very beginning very beginning of prophethood. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only 40 years old. He is being blessed with the prophethood. Quran has not yet come. Ahadith are not yet there. He has not, uh, uh, in the, you know, directed people towards goodness. He is in the very early stage of his nubuwat and his prophethood. And Allah is taking a qasam upon the akhlaq of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is saying, noon. Allah knows what he means by that. Wal qalami wa ma yasturoon. By the pen and what people write and inscribe. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ Oh Muhammad, by the grace of your Lord, you are not an insane person. You are not mad. You, are, you have sanity. You are a very wise man. People call you a madman. No, you are not a madman. You are a sane person. You are aqalman and wise and extremely intelligent person. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ And your reward is going to be such which will never cease. A majnoon, a divana, a madman, his actions are, are not accountable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is marfool qalam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying your good deeds, your actions are being noted down and you will be rewarded for each and every good deed which you are doing. And Allah will reward you with so much reward which will never uh, end and which will never uh, you, you know, cease. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَنْنُونَ And the third thing is وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are upon a sublime character. Your characters are of the highest nature. You, you, what is character, good characteristics? Let's say, mercy, rahm. Rasulullah is extremely merciful and gentle and kind. Anas radiyallahu anhu says, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا كَانَ أَرْحَمَ بِالْعِيَالِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I've never seen anyone so gentle with children, kids, than Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. He would look at kids playing around, he would look at them, absorb them, he would feel really nice. Hassan Hussein are playing with their friends, they are small children, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم approaches them. And Hussein runs around, Rasulullah runs after them. And then he, he is cornered, he comes this direction, Rasulullah spreads his hands. And when he gets hold of him, he carries him, he hugs him, he kisses him. And then he says, you know, huma, in another place he says, huma taya min al-jannah. There are two flowers which Allah has given me from Jannah. Hassan Hussein are my flowers. By smelling flowers you feel good, you feel sukoon. So through my children I feel good, my sukoon. He kisses a child and an Arabi, a Bedouin sees him. And he says, do you kiss your children? I have ten children, I have never kissed any one of them. I ask you that question as well. Have you ever kissed your children? Go on. Today when you go, kiss your children. Kissing of the children. Where is the the یہ طریقہ ہے تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم kissed a child and someone asked him یا رسول اللہ you know you kiss your children I have ten I have never kissed anyone any one of them and رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم replied او املک لکا ان نزع اللہ من قلبی کا رحمہ can I can I can I have any control over your affairs if Allah has taken out the mercy from your heart so this is mercy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is extremely merciful, he is Rahim. Allah says regarding him in Quran, in the last ayat of Surah At-Tawbah, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ That this Prophet is Rauf and he is Rahim. Allah said regarding himself a few verses before إِنَّهُ بِهِمْ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا And at the end of surah he is saying my prophet is also Rauf and Rahim. Rauf means shafqat wala, shafiq. And Rahim means rahmat wala, meherban. So my prophet is extremely shafiq and rahim with his ummah and with the believers. Rasulullah's akhlaq, rahmat. And his hilm and forbearance, his sabr and his patience, and his sakhawat and his generosity, and his shuja'at and valor and bravery, all akhla, his haya and sharm. Sayyid, Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu anhu says, Kaan Rasulullah s.a.w. ashadda hayaan min al-adra'i fi khidriha, wa kaan idha kariha shayan, arafnahu fi wajihi. He was more hayadar and more modest than a virgin girl who has spent her whole uh, life behind the curtains, behind the veil, who has never appeared before anyone who has not seen the outside world. Not in today's world because the, everything is inside the house. The whole world is in the house in the form of that box and in the form of internet and TV and whatever. But this girl who has never seen the outside world, imagine how modest she would be, that 9, 10, 11 year old girl, 12, 15 year old girl. So Rasulullah was more modest than such a girl. And if he, if he disliked anything, he would really control himself, but his color would change. And due to the, 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 his face changing, we would realize that he didn't like this. And immediately would say, oh Rasulullah, sorry, sorry, my mistake. We, forgive us. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was a very, very modest person. He was hayadar, he was sharm, sharmila, sharam, haya. This is a good characteristic. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had the best of characteristics that a person can imagine. And the, you read into such books which have been written with regards to the akhlaq of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Allah said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ
So these are our akhlaq, our life should be sorted out, our ibadah should be proper, pray five times a day and give your sadaqah, zakat properly, keep your fast and rosa properly, do as much zikr as you can, prepare for the life after death, hereafter, always remember your death, one day I have to die and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep that at the back of your mind, remember it, never forget that. Ibadat properly, muamlat and dealings properly, businessmen should do their business under the you know watchful eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever I say, whatever I do, Allah is watching me, Allah is observing me, Allah is looking at me. All my actions, my words are being noted down by kiram and katibin on my right and left. Be conscious of that and your mu'ashara, social life, may correct your social life. And with regards to the whole creation of Allah, your akhlaq, your conduct, your characteristics, your manners, your ethos, they should be of the highest possible manner that they can be, that people would admire you, they would admire your honesty, your sincerity, your gentleness, your kindness, and uh, your good akhlaq, and they would say, this is the true Muslim. We should remember that we are holding the banner of Islam and carrying Islam around. People will look at Islam through us. If our akhlaq are good, they will trust Islam and they will take it as a good religion. The fruits, the, the tree of Islam is judged by the fruit it produces. We are the fruits. If we become good, then they will think that the tree is good as well. But if our akhlaq are not good, if we keep cheating and lying, deceiving, tricking, and you know, at every opportunity we take from wherever we can, people will say, what type of people are Muslims? They don't behave themselves. What well, This is how they are. This is what they do. And th those who want to defame Islam and discourage other people, they will get, uh, uh, you know, tools out of this and they will spread uh, these bad uh, propaganda about Islam. So we should try and behave ourselves, be good people. May Allah give me the tawfiq to first act upon what I have said and give us all the tawfir to practice upon our deen, our Islam and on guided guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahmatullahi